Today I'm making some t-shirts for my brother-in-law's small business. I recorded using TikTok and I don't know what happened to my sound so I have to do a voiceover but I'm just showing the paper that I used to do all my t-shirts. This is linked in my Amazon storefront. It's PPD for dark transfers. These are the ones I always used. It doesn't matter if it's a light t-shirt or a dark t-shirt. I just prefer these because they provide a lot more vibrant colors than the light transfers and then for me they're just a lot easier to work with. For light transfers, you usually have to mirror the image and then place it face down on top of the t-shirt. I always have such a hard time trying to peel it off after, so I don't like to do that. Here is my printer that I have always used for all of my videos and all of my t-shirts. This is not any special printer, it is not sublimation, it is just an HP and it uses regular ink. And so I'm just putting in my paper into the tray and loading it up. I like to just do one page at a time to prevent jamming, but now we can go ahead and print. I'm making two t-shirts, so I have two sets of fish here. I am going to use the bleed because I want the dark outlines to come out, and I'm also going to use system dialogues just to get a better image. Now we just go over into preferences, and all I'm going to do is change my printer quality to best. Once your image is sent over to your printer, now it is time to print. This is what our sheet looks like. Like I said, the colors just come out super, super vibrant and nice, which is the main reason why I only use dark transfers. The dark outline looks like that because I added a bleed, but we will be cutting right inside of that line, so it doesn't really matter. Here I am going to start setting up my mat. This is just um, HTV vinyl that I'll be using for the lettering. For HTV vinyl, make sure that you're always putting the shiny side down just like this and you're also mirroring your image. I haven't cleaned my mat in a long time so it's not that sticky so here I'm just going to be using tape to stick down my vinyl. Normally in this situation you would use the light grip or the standard mats which is the light blue or the green mats. To help hold my mat and the vinyl, I am putting just a flat ruler right into here and that's just going to help um, carry my mat while it cuts and keep it flat. And now I'm just going to load up my mat and then start cutting. I am using the HTV Ronde vinyl brand and for my setting it is just going to be the everyday iron on. And I usually just do hang around and watch my Cricut cut just to make sure that my vinyl isn't um, ripping or getting stuck anywhere or falling off the mat. Once our Cricut is done cutting, we simply just need to unload it from the mat and begin weeding. I always like to use a very sharp tweezer. It just makes peeling this off a lot easier. Once we have our vinyl weeded, we can move on to the print and cut page. Begin by just taking your page and placing it right on top of the mat. And again, I'll be using some scotch tape to secure my page onto the mat. Now I'll be moving my mat over to my Cricut and here I'm just going to press to load. Since this is a print and cut image, your Cricut is going to have to scan for the lines and so I will be turning off the lights for it to do this. This is going to make sure that the Cricut is really looking at those lines and not going to cut outside. If your lines are off, you can always calibrate your Cricut before using it for your projects. You can also try closing the lid to make sure that no light is coming in, but since I had my little plushies on there, I got too lazy to move them. Once your Cricut is done scanning and has detected the lines, it will move on to cutting so we can turn the lights back on and just watch the magic happen. Once the Cricut is done cutting, we can unload our mat and this is what it looks like. Since these are dark transfers, we do have to peel the images off the sheet and so I just gently rub my thumb on it and then it peels off very easily. 
Since I did use a bleed for this project, this is why the outline is left behind, but this is just going to make sure that we have nice dark edges. Here I have my HTV vinyl and I have weeded every piece and this is what it looks like. I also have my little fishies that I did print and cut for. Now go to part 2 where you can watch me press this down on the t-shirts. These are t-shirts he had just laying around. This brand is Lululemon. He likes them breathable because you know he's a fisherman and you need to breathe because it gets hot sometimes. And so I did use vinyl here as well as in the back but for the little fishies I used printable vinyl and so you guys want to see how I did this please keep watching so here I have my heat press it is heating up it will get to 320 degrees so I'm just gonna wait for that Bing. and so for the front of the t-shirt um, we just wanted that really cool tee with the hook so I just have um, one separate like this and it's gonna just go in the very corner and this backing is sticky, so it helps just to um, push it down and it won't move. Since this is kind of like stretchy material, try not to like pull it or anything. Leave it very relaxed. And since this has its backing, you don't need any parchment paper. But I like to just add it, just, you know, for safety. And so now we're going to be pressing this for 12 seconds. Once it's done, we're just going to remove this. And this is really hot, so be careful. But it is a hot peel, so you could just wait a few minutes. Um, but then when you peel it, it should just come off right away. For the back part, I am folding this t-shirt in half. Um, because I want to know where the middle part is. This is just the best... Uh, easiest way to know where that middle parting is you don't have to leave it long just maybe two three seconds and then once you open it it will have that little indent right there it is a good idea to just grab uh, this lint roller and then just give it a little roll now we're going to take our vinyl and i like to fold it in half and just make indents at the top and bottom of it this is going to tell me where the middle is like that and then we just line up those creases with the one we've done before and once again we're just going to put it on our press and press for 12 seconds once our teacher it's done again you're just going to wait a few uh, minutes and then just peel Now we're going to add our fish and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you do have to line these up perfectly um, or else you're going to see that little outline in the back. Uh, but just take your time with this part and use some tweezers to move it around. Once you have your image um, very close lined up and you're happy with it, all we do is just add our parchment paper right on top. And try not to move it as much as you can. Uh, but now again we're just going to give this another press. And once it's done, we basically have our image done. And you might be wondering why I do this separately, the vinyl versus the printing cut. And you know, go through all that trouble of having to line it up. And it's simply because of the size. When we do printing cut, meaning we have a lot of colors and we're not able to do this with vinyl, you do have to stay inside the registration marks. These would be all the way down here if I used the whole page. But it's not big enough to do a 10 inch uh, decal like this one. Another reason why I do this is because of the quality. And so this is just black vinyl and you can see how vibrant and dark the color is. This is printed black and you can see the difference between these two blacks. Which is why I do it 
It just creates a better overall quality when you're looking at the t-shirts. And I know they're far from perfect. I need to work on my aligning skills, but they're just for my brother-in-law to wear, you know, for his personal use. So this works great. 